Hi people, it's Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to strip the paint off of a guitar body like this using a heat gun like this. So when we work with the guitar on the bench, the body's going to move around quite a bit, especially when we're chipping away at it. And what we want to make sure is it stays really still. That will help with a bit of resistance while we're chipping away, stop any accidents happening. So what I like to do, and this is a tip that I'm going to recommend you use for other things that you're going to do on a guitar body, including routing, is to use a longer piece of wood like this. And I'm actually going to screw the guitar body to this bit of wood and then clamp this bit of wood down. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a spare neck plate just to mark the four holes that go through the neck. This standard neck plate fits the guitar perfectly. Then I'm going to drill some pilot holes into here at the points where I've marked out. These ready for the screw to then screw into. And now I'm going to screw the body down. So I'll use the neck plate to protect the neck, put the screws lightly through the holes in the neck plate and the body, line them up with my holes underneath. And as with anything I screw, I'll screw in each screw one at a time part of the way. Then once they're all in, making sure they're holding the thing in the right place and it's not slipping, then I tighten all four screws. And this can work exactly the same by turning the guitar body round, lining up the screws with the holes, putting the neck plate in just to stop it scratching the guitar, and then tightening the screws. Cut this little block that's just the right height for the neck here to fit in so that when I screw these screws down, it's not gonna cause the guitar to tilt up like that. So let's just do the final screws. There we go. I like to put that piece of wood between the jaws of my workbench, bents, tighten it up and clamp it in place. Once it's clamped in place, there's no give at all because these two surfaces of the workbench are level with the piece of wood. So they're touching the back of the guitar. So there's no wobbling at all. It really holds it steady. If you're using this technique to hold the guitar in place while you're doing something where you didn't want to scratch the surface of the guitar, you could use foam like this to protect the guitar or cover the work surface in towels before you put it down. Even put a piece on that wood so when the guitar body is screwed to the wood there's something sandwiched between it so there's no chance of scratching. But of course for this, as we're taking the paint off the surface, there's no worries about the scratches or marks at all. Alternatively, if you don't have a workbench with jaws like that, you might just clamp it on each side onto the table that you're going to use like I am. It's easier for me to film like this. It's not wobbling, but I could put another piece of wood on this side or this side that matches this height to make sure there is no give at all in it. But I think this is right for what I'm going to do today. So here's my heat gun. The main things you need to know about it are on the back, it's got a dial like this, which you can turn to turn the heat up and down. I tend to have it about three quarters of the way up. I find that if the filament is all the way up um, and glowing red or even a really bright orange. It's probably too powerful for what we need and runs the risk of burning out. Uh, it's got an on-off switch with three different positions. They basically adjust the fan and the power of the fans blowing the heat through. So on the lowest position, second and the top. So you can hear the top's more powerful. It does mean things are blowing around everywhere, which is why we've got to think about safety precautions, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, I've got a scraper that I use as I'm going along. It's quite a solid, hard scraper. It's quite blunt as well, which means it doesn't run the risk of cutting or scraping into the guitar, scratching the guitar. But of course, if we're taking all the paint off the body, you're probably gonna end up sanding it anyway. So the odd scratch isn't the end of the world. I actually don't use this as much as the adapter that it came with, which is also a scraper. This scraper though is much thinner. It's also a bit more flexible. So as you're digging into the guitar, what tends to happen is it bends. So you need to end up straightening it every now and then. It clips on the end of the gun like this. There's different attachments, but I quite like this one. Um, and then when you're working on the guitar body, while the heat's coming through, you can scrape normally hold for a few seconds in one position, heat up, and then scrape forward. It does also mean this heats up, which is great because this bit of metal is hot, really good for pulling off the paint. However, like I said, it's quite thin. So what tends to happen is this bit might bend upwards, bend as you're pushing down like this on the guitar, you might bend it. Now you've got to be really careful. If you bend it suddenly and it totally blocks the end, you're gonna risk the gum um, burning out. So if it ever bends too much, switch it off straight away. 
just like you wouldn't put the gu gun down and cover the end of the gun. Um, what I tend to do to straighten this out is while I'm working, maybe on periods where I'm switching the gun off, I'll use the scraper just to hold down like that and flatten it again, because like I said, it's flimsy, it bends. Sometimes with the gun off again, I will push it down on the surface of my workbench just like this, just to neaten it, straighten it a bit. Um, but never touch it with your hands because this is gonna get very hot. This whole tip, the metal bit, is the hottest bit of the gun. I'm going to leave a link in the description below of where you can get um, a heat gun like this or a scraper like that. Now this guitar was an old 60s Telecaster, it's had some work done to it, extra pickup put in here, it had had a tremolo um, bridge put in which has now been blocked up, but basically it's old, it's grimy, I've already stripped the back so you can see the stuff that's been coming off. You can actually see that sometimes you can strip it off in long large pieces, but quite often you get this tiny dust. So this is 60 year old nitro spray. Don't really want to be breathing that in. So we have to take safety precautions when we're working. I always wear gloves when using the heat gun. And of course my mask as well whenever I'm doing anything like this. And of course safety goggles because there's going to be a lot of paint chips flying around. And then open the window to let some air flow through. Put the air filter on. So here's some time-lapse footage of me stripping the back of the guitar. And while we're watching that, I'll just remind you that you can follow me on all different types of social medias. It'd be great if while you're on YouTube, you can like and subscribe as well. And of course, you can support me by buying Devils and Sons merchandise from my Redbubble shop. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, bags, cups and mugs, a whole range of different items. Anyway, let's get back to the guitar. So here, I'm just gonna talk over some clips of me working in real time just so you can see how long it takes. And initially what I'm doing here on the first part that I'm working on the top of the guitar is trying to heat up an area to focus on it. As you see, I've just turned up the heat because I felt like the heat gun wasn't giving off enough heat. I didn't see the orange or red reflective glow from the filter on the body. If you see that, you know it's too hot. It might burn the paint, it might burn the body. So it takes a little while, when I'm applying a bit of pressure, what I'm trying to do, and you'll see it from other angles in a minute, is get the edge of the scraper on the heat gun to slide under a bit of paint and peel up the whole section of paint at one go. So what's happening here is the paint's getting hot and so is the scraper. So here it is from another angle, you can see that idea of getting a corner under a piece and slowly peeling it back, sort of unwrapping it, a bit like when you're peeling an orange. It doesn't always come off in sections like this. You might find little chunks come off, little chips, longer strips. Sometimes it just flakes away. It, again, this is in real time, so it's taking its time to peel off. It's a slow process, but you can see this paint, it's all sort of coming off like one thick peel. Now here I'm going to use the scraper. So I've started peeling already with the scrape on the end of the heat gun but now I'm just putting more and more heat onto this paint and using the scraper in the other hand to really push it away. Sometimes it's a matter of directing the heat onto the same point that you're scraping so that bit is the hottest and therefore the most likely to peel off. Sometimes it's about warming up a whole big area and then being able to peel that away. Now here you can just about see on the paint body there's lots of checking. That's the sort of cracks that appear over time on your nitro finish but also appear as you're heating it up. So that means when I'm using either the scraper in my hand or the scraper on the heat gun the paint is going to flake off following those checks. So you get lots of crumbly bits that are worth sweeping up. What you'll probably find as you're scraping the top and bottom sides of the body is that it's very hard to get around the edges at that angle. So it might be easier to change the body angle itself in order to do this. Okay, so I've rearranged the guitar so it's flat down, pointing out towards me so I can try and get the heat gun more into where the horn is. It's a bit awkward, I'm gonna use the um, scraper a bit more to chip away at it, but let's give it a go.
Right, well I've finished stripping the guitar. I've left the paint on the inside where the recesses are. They're gonna be covered up and not seen anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And because this particular guitar has some bits in it like this block that are, have been put in by someone else to fill where the tremolo was and a few other little dings that need a bit of filling put on it, I'm actually then gonna sand over the surface. So these little bits of paint that are left aren't really gonna show up. I could spend more time with the heat gun to try and remove them, but it seems a bit pointless so I'm gonna to have to sand the surface anyway after I filled it. Well I hope you found that useful and please leave any advice or tips for future viewers in the comments below and while you're here give a like and subscribe. I'm not actually sponsored by anyone but I do have a Redbubble site where I sell merchandise like these t-shirts. It'd be great if you could go over there and check things out or even just support me by following me on my other social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram where you could actually leave some photos of what you've done to your guitar and you've stripped the paint off of it. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing to this one. So this was for a client called Luca. He wanted it in this butterscotch blonde finish. So what I've done is given it a few layers of a nitro primer in white, so then the butterscotch colour. You can see there's some slightly darker bits here. And that's where I put on a very slightly darker amber colour and a translucent tobacco to give it a slightly aged look. So this is where the pit guard was. It's been removed to leave the natural colour underneath. That's because on this one I am giving it a very natural relic look. I'm actually going to make a few videos about that showing how I put the dents and dings in, add the checking to the nitro finish. It'd be great if you can go and check those out as well. Like I said, if you're subscribed you'll see them as they pop up. You may also know that I do extreme relic finish guitars and they're ones that in no way are natural, they're totally deformed, they look like they've been destroyed, they look like they've been set on fire, but they're still absolutely playable. I have a few videos about them and loads of photos of them on my Facebook and Instagram feed. So please do check me out, thanks for watching and for now, happy strumming.